Okay, quick disclaimer before we get started. The Blockmates podcast is for entertainment and informational purposes only and does not constitute financial advice. The information and opinions expressed on the podcast are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of Blockmates or its affiliates. Listeners are encouraged to do their own research and consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Blockmates and its affiliates are not liable for any losses or damages incurred as a result of the reliance on the information or opinions expressed on this podcast. All right, looks like we're back, eh? Been a while, hasn't it? It's been a while. I decided Our to take. Some, I, I decided to take a sabbatical as opposed to a holiday. Thanks for that, <laughs> guys. I really appreciate you, like letting me take some time off. It was much needed. It's good to be back, though. Definitely missed this. Um, uh, congr- congratulations! Doing? Congratulations! Did you have another boy or a girl? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. It could lead on to a whole lot of other discussion. How are you guys doing? How's it been? Are we still crabbing? Market. Market's been happy. Did all right. Haven't given it all back yet. Yet, I should say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Soon, yeah. Though. It's coming. It's coming. Because what, what I've realized, what I realized uh, yesterday, or I might have been a little bit earlier today, is when I was looking at the S&P, right, like the bottom was clearly October. And we've obviously clearly been in a soft landing since. But then you start to see that only seven companies are actually propping up the S&P and each of them AI generated, right? So I'm like, was this all planned? You know, did an AI bot plan this whole secular bull run back in <laughs> back in October 2022? Is that actually what's happened? Because you've got 493 fucking use, sorry, excuse the French there, useless S&P companies that are done absolutely diddly shit which are like up 5% on the year, whereas the top seven are up like at least 58%. It's absolutely mental. And we're about to hit all-time highs, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Grant's line is so thick, it's just going to bust straight through. That's it's how, that's how the index is usually, though. Like last cycle, a lot of it was tech-induced. I'm like, I mean, that's why it's such a great product, isn't it? Because it rebalances to how it needs to be. But if you look at the profitability of the top... um. 10%, it's usually just about the 10% that are dragging everything else up. So it's it's probably a similar sort of proportion that is allowing it to increase. Um, but the basket of assets that are dragging it up might have changed slightly in, in favor of AI. But everyone's pivoting just to just have an AI product anyway, aren't they? Like, who was it recently who bought extremely, like, overpaid because a competitor had released this AI product, so they effectively just went to market and acquired someone for like a ridiculous amount. So it's just kind of what investor relations want to see, isn't it? So, but yeah, it's it's kind of crazy, isn't it? Look like how Bitcoin should be at fifty k if this is if it was correlated. <laughs> well, that was the conversation that was had by you know some of the more intelligent um, crypto Twitter participants. Is that it's it's like we've had Larry Flint is the chairman and the CEO of the biggest asset management company on the planet at nine trillion. Think. Think, think was it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And he's like, he wasn't, pardon me, excuse me, excuse my French. He wasn't able to get the price above 32 grand, you know, like, and, and he had quite a compelling conversation and interview around it as well. It wasn't just like, Oh, I like Bitcoin. It was like, it was like a five minute ramble. Um, so, and then obviously with, with, traditional markets doing what they're doing it's like how do we get above that point at this, at this juncture and well i think the answer is that we need more retail a lot more retail otherwise we're not going to see it too much until then just look at the volume on that chart it's like it's not even it's not even peanuts it's like dust you look at the weekly like when was that it's march it's just but this is like around the time that a lot of market makers in the US got scared off. Jumped I mean, and the, the, the order book was super, chilled out. The, the order book was super thin there as well. I mean, you know, like someone sneezed and the price would go either way. Uh, and mm. listen, I think it's not all it's not all bad in inverted commas. It's like this whole news from XRP. Um, as much as I'm not a fan of XRP, it's still great for what the market's doing at the moment. You know, further news yesterday of, of Gensler doing a deal with Ripple. Um, that was oh, yeah, very promising. 
Essentially, I mean, I just I didn't get the full the full emphasis of it, but essentially, Genza publicly announced that they'd done a deal, and one of those conditions of the deal is that Ripple Ripple partners slash owners would not be selling any of their tokens. I think for the next two years or something like that. Um, That's all right. And they've that only was sold the fucking three hundred million. <laughs> they've only sold like you know the three quadrillion that they've had. So listen, it's not like they're going to need money anytime soon. And who says that they can't go and do, you know, other things? But the point is that a deal was done. And I think that's very promising for the narrative that is crypto, particularly for the US. And then, you know, it kind of like keeps people a little bit more kind of like at ease with what's happening uh, in the mm. space. At the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's a positive for, for the space. And I think, you know, as much as I don't like... XRP, it's irrelevant. It's you know overall, it's a good thing. It's it's gonna yeah. It's like we like anyone hating on this being positive reaction is is not yeah involved in the industry really, are they? Like, but it, what it what it has done, I think, is give a little bit of clarity of what is the what is the right path for projects. Like so. I think the ruling, obviously I'm, I'm terrible when it comes to kind of anything that's down like a legislation route, but the ruling was in favor that the assets that were traded on a digital exchange at a fair price were not in any way involving the sale of a security. So what that kind of tells me is one, projects will probably tend to do airdrops or they'll probably tend to do larger ra- larger public raises through something like uh, an LBP because if that's a fair price you, you're getting what you're getting it's effectively like you're trading on an open exchange anyway when you're doing that so to give people a little bit of clarity um, you know, I suppose for the likes of Coinbase which has obviously just been ripping and ripped off the news of this as well it's they immediately relisted XRP um, yes. And a lot of their Brilliant. alts that have had yeah. similar in a similar sort of basket or under the similar sort of crosshairs, then you know it looks a little bit looks a little bit rosier for them, doesn't it? Yeah. But coins been ripping on it. Coins been coin. Yeah, uh, coin. <clears throat> Coinbase was a <laughs> that was an obvious play. Oh, you know, shit. hindsight and all that. Mate, when it like, when it last dumped, I like, <laughs> put I put a buy order in at like fifty bucks, and it never hit, and I was like, "Fuck!" and just left it. Mad. Like if that pumps back to greatness, back to four hundred bucks, that is a huge win. And I honestly, like, I probably I wouldn't be surprised if at some stage it, it does hit that. The thing is, the thing is, if you think of okay, let's let's look at this. Like traditional markets are somewhat more logical than than crypto. In fact. They are logical in many ways. And I think one of the logics is that Coinbase are the front runners to Bitcoin, particularly in the States. We know this. If there is any kind of ETF, if there's any kind of custody requirement that would be needed around Bitcoin advisory, it doesn't matter what it is. Coinbase is going to be the first name on the list. It's kind of like mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how many how many people you approach, Coinbase is going to win that. They're going to win that that contract, whatever that contract might look like. And and they are essentially, in many ways, going to be the poster child for what Bitcoin could be in, in a retail, particularly in a retail context. That's how they've groomed that business to be. It's all about retail. It's all about this whole ideology around retail. So... I would say that Coinbase will probably hit all-time highs and maybe even go beyond that. Uh, do I have a bag of Coinbase? No, I'm, I'm foolish for not having one. Um, you know, I'm more focused on the AI side of things at the moment. But I think Coinbase just seems like a really good play at the moment. And I don't think it's done by any stretch of the imagination. No, I think another couple of good plays within like the crypto space is things like Galaxy, uh, Hut, Mara, Raya, you know, maybe even Hood to some degree as well. Because they've all got like massive connections in. And if you look at uh, like the Galaxy, Hut, Mara, Riot chart, they almost like, like all four of them are basically identical. And so it's very, very interesting to see. 
Yeah. Same, same with Hood. Like, Hood's just been absolutely flying. Like, yeah, what? Was, that's what up was, only, dude. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, and like if you look at the weekly, the moving averages are going to cross as well. I really wouldn't be surprised if we see some kind of like wick up to like the 16 buck range on Hood again. And then if they get like all time bull run back up to that wick, that's at like what 85 bucks for mate, play of the year. I mean, that look at that institutional revenue hasn't even begun for Coinbase. No, you know, you get an ETF, you get Bitcoin, you know, you get BlackRock. I mean. They're the ones. They will be the ones front running this whole entire space, and then everyone else will be looking for the scraps. But the scraps will still be worthy. But these these guys will run that process absolutely one hundred percent. That's obviously BlackRock named on the filing, didn't they? So yes, yeah, I mean it's just it's a, it's almost like an obvious play in so many ways. Um, so kudos to them. For playing the game and playing the long game. So, is there any? What's it? The, Ethereum's just been a bit. Take all this shit off the screen. Just been a bit. Flat, I almost but... get the. I almost get the feeling like Ethereum's like consolidating and preparing for something. Like it's waiting. It's waiting yeah. for Cancun, and I can promise. Oh, I bet you. Obviously, like, if we're going to pump on Cancun, but like, I bet you fucking, sorry, I bet you Coinbase is going to send on Cancun as well because Coinbase devs are also helping Ethereum devs sort out the back-end stuff with Cancun. And I know I've said this on a blood podcast before, but, like, what is Coinbase? Well, Coinbase is Ethereum. It's CB, CB ETH, right? They've got a huge stake in it. And then when um, Cancun actually goes live, they're going to benefit from it so freaking much. Like, this is just, like, one of those weird conspiracy theories. Could you imagine, like, if the, um, you know, if in, like, the Optimism Super Chain, they start using CBE as the gas token? And could you imagine that? I don't know if that's actually technically possible, but if you factor then in maybe, like, account abstraction or something, where you can then start to pay in whatever coin, whatever, you can start to pay gas in whatever coin you're actually transferring. So if you've got, like, a, I assume if you've got a shit coin, and you need to like get rid of it somewhere to another wallet because you're going to go dump it because you've got too much of a bigger bag. They can then just like pay gas in that. So I know. Yeah. Super bullish on it, to be fair. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case, to be honest. I think that you're going to see a lot, a lot more liquid stake and derivatives as gas tokens. Frax chain will be mm-hmm. Frax ETH. There's rumors of Unsheathium, and they'll probably use their Unsheath and. What, did, what what have Mantle used in the end? Do we know? I don't um, know. Yeah, because there was rumours that like that was going to be a... Also, they've used MNT. That's interesting. I mean, the thing is, what we need to start perhaps considering at this juncture is that, you know, we've, we've, we know that the hardening which is coming next year is going to have an impact. Um, you know, whether it's a meme or not, it, it's irrelevant. I mean, I think in many ways it is a meme in terms of how much Bitcoin is left and all the rest of it, but there will be, there will be, it will be a significant event and there will be an uprising and the uprising will afford us the opportunity, obviously pre the uprising, what's coming, you know, what is, what is the next, kind of like main narrative. I mean, this is what we do, right? This is what we're supposed to be thinking about all the time. Well, I try to anyways, but it's like, is AI going to be a thing in the next cycle, like the next bull? So let's look at the next bull. It's going to be brought about by the halvening because that's what happened the year before. The halvening is always a shit one. Um, and it's and we got to think about that. So it's like liquid staking derivatives are obviously a big part of it. Uh, we know that it's already happening and I don't think it's going to die anytime soon because you know, we only have like such a small percentage of all this this ether to run staked. Um, but what else is there? So there's AI. Are we going to see like L2s, L3s? What L2s? Always it's just going to be about chains that have, you know, like Frax has got their own chain. So does that mean that that then becomes a narrative within the next bull where we have a Lido chain and, you know, a Kraken chain and a base chain and that's where it all starts happening and we we don't have fragmented liquidity because we have the likes of Tapioca Dark coming in and spreading that liquidity evenly 
or on demand, and then everything changes. Um, yeah, just thinking out loud, asking questions, you know, like where are we going for the next cycle? And then positioning I, ourselves accordingly. Yeah, I think L2s will be as not as popular, but as synonymous as ERC20s. Like every, everyone, failing projects will use them as a bit of a, bit of a kickstart uh, projects that actually need them will use them app chains become a thing where you can control the dynamics of the chain and the line so you can kind of manipulate it to suit the actual protocol that's better than the, the kind of l2 like a standard l2 um but yeah the real picks and shovels play for that is your cross-chain messaging solutions you, your layer zeros your yeah um Circles, new one that they've got coming out. Um, Chainlink, which I'm going to bring up the Chainlink chart actually because I've seen some of the tech transactions on Testnet and um, Link was actually used for the gas token of it. So it's been it's up 20% today. So I should have mm. bought that yesterday when I noticed that. But um, And it's up 20% and Bitcoin is a new king. This is probably the first that we've seen in about 34 years. Look at that. Man, it just means Jim Cramer hasn't been woken up yet and he hasn't made a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> but look at well, that. Well, maybe Nancy like, Pelosi's uh, trading uh, with Link. Yeah. Bro, 438 that. days in a horrible, horrible, horrible range. Jesus Christ. Sud that for it off. Maybe the devs still have lots of coins left. This was like this area here was when they popped up and said they're going to sell another like 200 million or something, which in, hindsight was, which in hindsight was like the perfect time to buy, <laughs> obviously. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it do well because like those Sado masochists of the like Marines have just been through the ringer, haven't they? So, um, Are they in the left though, Grant? Yeah, there's one. There is there is one, and I quote tweeted him the other day, and uh, he said, um, "How was it? It was like you should have uh, you should have just bought Link and held it for two years." And I was like, "Mate, I bought Link two years ago, and if I'd have held it, it would have been dust." Just look at the chart. I'm lucky I got out on a pump at break even. <laughs> Jesus Christ, mate! <laughs> like, fuck off. But I've still got some. Uh... Still got some etched markings from the very beginning. Uh, <laughs> those are the Crazy. real link, linky days there. Mate, that's a real link marine there. To have, to have bought it where you've just marked off, held it right to the top, and then to held it all the way through now over the last like 486 days of just pure agony. Yeah. This, so what, like, this I mean, rally was what kept me interested. All right, it probably wouldn't be here now. <laughs> I think for a lot weird. of us, for a lot of us, it did. I mean, at one point in time, Link was 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 considered a darling in the market. Um, will it ever be one again? I don't know. Maybe, but it has it has the so called relevance, doesn't it? In terms of you know them providing infrastructure for for pretty much the whole of DeFi. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. um, Grant, what do you think the relevance of Chain link doing well is like just in general. Do you think there is like this this whole idea that because they are the the main proponent of DeFi and if they do well, the rest of DeFi does well? Do you think that still stands? Possibly, but um, there's like that DeFi 1.0 index, <laughs> which I won't uh, say the anagram of it. <laughs> you can figure it out <laughs> if I say it. Compound, <laughs> Uni, Maker, Arvis, yes. Synthetics, and Sushi. But Link's in there as well. But it doesn't make it. It doesn't make a funny um, anagram if I if I put Link in. Um, I think so. It's just like it, it's a good kind of mix of positive sentiment, good update. The meme of token not needed finally flipped on its head. Token needed for like this cross chain messaging. Um, and DeFi 1.0 projects seem to have been picking up. And we've, I've set I've set a, a brief for our writers and team to have a look at well, why 
why would that be? Like, is it a mixture of being around the market for such a long time, just having that lindiness, products standing up tests of times with regards to security, users, TVL? How profitable are they? Are they actually profitable? Because Maker is fucking super profitable. Yeah. Um, and even down to like, if you've had such an extended vesting period, maybe you've been around 2018, 2019, where does that equilibrium come where there isn't a, like a, a large portion of the supply still to come into the market so you don't have that overhang as well? But I don't know. It's probably a mixture of all of those and specific projects in that basket probably have a better balance of all that stuff I've just mentioned. So I'll... I don't know who's picked it up, but we'll be releasing it in a couple of weeks. But it just seems so like you it's, do, it's coming full circle. You do hold Lincoln in high regard then. Um, that's what it sounds like. Whereas I think Dan and I don't really so much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's maybe it's a bit of like, you know, good, good that tech. Kind of- good. It is, well, listen, I mean, you could argue that it is good too. You know, I mean, there definitely is an argument for that. Trying to find the uh, there was yeah so this the CCIP fee destination gas CCIP fee zero point two one link um so like quite, the whole idea of to- the it's quite a lot. yeah it's quite a bit so the token yeah. it's just notoriously being completely useless and used as kind of a bootstrapping mechanism for the team which which it is like that's just the game um yeah. but it's just been like mercilessly dumped on <laughs> the holders which are so kind of dedicated to the cause which is kind of respectable and kind of backwards at the same time but like i just really hope they get um the kind of reward for sticking around and being so bullish on it but if if there is a gas fee associated with this then that could be really really something finally for it um, I have heard rumors that Layer Zero, the, whenever they inevitably launch their token, that could potentially be used for gas as well. So, yeah, I don't know. That imagine, seems like a imagine what imagine what that deal would look like between those two parties. That would be a very interesting one to look at. Yeah, exactly. Fucking hell. Um, just going back, going back to Bitcoin. There's some interesting news that's come through that could really get the price going later on today or maybe even right away is tesla yeah i don't know how reliable this account is and i also don't know how reliable this account is because that's using the way back machine as well but i don't know yeah, I feel, like, like, uh... I feel like the market would have ripped a little bit more than it has. But I also said this about when BlackRock filed for an ETF and it didn't pump for like three hours. <laughs> it just ripped. Yeah, we too. I've been very cognizant of it. We we pick up on something and we like, uh, it's not doing it. And then you don't do anything. And then you look at it six hours later and you're like, geez, I could have made myself a really good like return on that. Then we're doing it again. Watch. It's going to land up doing it again. <laughs> you, know, you know what I think is happening is like people are still in like such fear and disbelief that you, you get this like extremely bullish news and they're, they're people, like mates are looking at each other. Are you going to buy? I don't know. Are you? Are you? Totally. Are you? Yeah, fuck it. Totally. I, I, I buy you buy grand buys. I dump grand dumps and you're left in the middle, Jerry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happens. I think that's how that's going to start working now. And I think that's why there's all these like delayed pumps. Yeah, everyone's like looking around for like, are you gonna go first? <laughs> I don't you hit know. the nail, hit the nail on the head, and that is the psychology that's currently playing out, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, we have to, we have to kind of like, it, seeing as though we are talking about tokens and narratives, you know, like we were given a heads up, and in many ways we also gave the heads up, and I think a lot of our listeners and community members will know this and that's solana and what's happening on solana at the moment um you know we've obviously i think even even when things were really bad to a certain extent we were still quite bullish about you know solana obviously we have 
relationship with probably one of the biggest builders, namely Networks in Solana, which is the Hero guys. Um, and they were talking about it a couple of months ago. They were saying, listen, there's going to be a bit of a Solana narrative. There's a lot of positive things happening. Um, and it's doing well, considering. It looked great, though, to be honest. Mm. Um, it is in the is range, that? right? Like Jedi, mate. Like as soon as we yes. got to like Solana Breakpoint, we were, like I'd never really looked into Solana much until going to Breakpoint, and then I was like, Solana, it's pretty cool. Look at look, yeah. look at this whole look look at oh, back then it was Sam money. Look what Sam who's just paid for like absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. We have caviar, we have crab, we have lobster lined up in this absolute pretty much like, what it was. hundred meter. I kid you not, one hundred meter long dining hall with like. These little waiters and waitresses with their like little canapes and like glasses of champagne. Oh, sir, would you like a little bit of chocolate? Oh, I'd love some chocolate. Like, even that for me is bullish. But then you actually go and talk to all of the people that are there, and like, you're like, wow, there's a lot of people building. And then we we met, we we ended up in like, uh, the back of a taxi, and it was with this guy who's like a, a, an investor. He had some like apes and and whatever, and like proper NFT guy. Had some wicked kicks as well. Um, and he was just saying like how bullish he was on the whole ecosystem, how he plowed a lot of money in. Obviously, 24 hours later, like the, the news came out of SPF, like Literally. everything crashed. But even like, like, 24, not, hours like, later. 24 hours later, it was so funny. Like, bro, Anatoly, yeah, he was on stage doing the closing speech. The token price of Solana rips. It freaking pumps to like 35, 36 bucks. Everybody in the course, oh yeah, it's going to 44 bucks. Literally, bro, two hours later, I'm on the plane back to the UK, yeah? And you've got all of these like, you know, people in their breakpoint hoodies shaking like this as they see the news. They can't actually do anything about their like Solana holdings because they're like on their mobile phone and they've probably got it on chain or whatever. They're there on the plane home just shaking. It was mad. But from then <laughs> I've been like, freaking so bullish on Solana and then you factor in like what you're saying about the hero network and how they're built they, they have just been building they have they have stayed consistent throughout yeah yeah we've we've been banging on about it for such a long time and part of that's luck or just kind of fit because we're good friends with the team but um as I say we wouldn't be talking about and making ourselves look like fucking idiots if we didn't think there was something there and, you know, it just seems like it's going to come to fruition now with no law should launch today. You all listen to this on a Friday. We're, we're recording this on a Thursday. But um, the product underlying is still operating on Solana using Hero. The token's going to migrate to Ethereum. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Pepper Dex, super interesting. Formatic is super interesting. And then there's just feels like there's a million and one projects that are building on Solana. I just want to tap into hero risk engine or liquidity layer whatever it may be it's um and if you're kind of still in the dark about it just go and listen to the interview I did with gunny last week it's um really try to drag every aspect of the protocol out of him and i think people have had a nice reaction to it but i've i've just been doing this it's going to take me a lot longer than i thought it was going to take me but uh kind of look at where solana is now and just everything that they've effectively built over the past 18 months and like the fallout of FTX and like what I've, what what they've kind of been up to in the meantime, but there is so much happening. There is just so much happening. I won't like spoil it because I think the report will be really really good. But um, you know, Pete, you don't don't just listen to what you hear on CT because half the people are just repeating what other people are saying because they can't they don't have a brain for themselves. So, and it's always a good trade if you're going going against the grain. I think. Well, I mean, the thing is that like Solana has been against the grain. There's so many ETH maxis and even guys who don't want to call themselves ETH maxis who who just want to hate upon Solana. But the thing is that there's like like Dan was saying is that there really is fundamentally like some some giga brands that are building there, and it's not just one or two protocols. There's like a lot, a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of good money, a lot of good, and a lot of money in there. Um, you know, and it's it's like you can't fade that kind of stuff. It's it's really is yes, it's been unfortunate that they that that things played out the way they played out and Sam was pretty much at the center of the whole thing. But what, what's been left behind 
is something that's like super strong. And I think we're seeing that at the moment. And what's interesting about it and about it and what's really relevant about this conversation, once again, in terms of like looking for narratives. I mean, the big narrative right now are trading bots. You know, as people like to to dunk on trading bots, but trading bots are are buying into an idea that could bring in a lot of retail because people love to gamble. Casinos are a big part of people's lives. I'm not much of a casino like attendee like casinos kind of gross me out like i don't like them but some people love them you know and i'll go to great lengths to actually go and place bets in a casino environment and these trading bots allow for that desire that people inherently have um so rollbit is a perfect example of that like you know everyone's been like dissing rollbit but they've run probably the most probably the most successful and effective campaign in a bear market that probably any protocol has ever done I mean, they're paying influencers a ridiculous amount of money. And they've essentially driven this whole entire narrative. And now other protocols and ecosystems will get to benefit off the back of what Rollbit has done, in my opinion. Have you seen some of the rumors of the the revenue? I actually haven't. Enlighten us, sir. Well, there's a couple... It's from my understanding, I've read like multiple different um, kind of speculative reports and it's anywhere from like 300 million to 500 million. Wow. So. So paying an influence, so paying an influence of 250 grand a month is actually jump change is what you say. Well, yeah, they'll be making that in half a day or whatever it is. Probably less than that. So, you can't, under, you can't it, address, like, like I've said this a couple of times now, so apologies if anyone's listening and I'm repeating myself, but on one hand, people are extremely salty because they're the ones not getting the six and seven yes. figure payments. Two, I don't know if they thought, thought this far ahead, and if they did, it's an extremely good chess move, but maybe I'm giving them a little bit more credit than it's due, but if they knew that was going to upset people, it doesn't necessarily matter if they're talking about your product in good light or bad light. They're still talking about your product. Like, what's the Charles Bukowski phrase? Yeah. It's like, the only thing worse than being talked about is, like, not being talked about effectively or something to the effect of that. It doesn't matter. Like, we've said this, we've said this a million times. Like, anything that's polarizing for better or for worse, just have a look. I hated Bored Apes. I hated the app token. <laughs> it absolutely ripped. Like anything that gives you a, like a visceral reaction to something for better or for worse, it's probably doing that in others. Or there's people yes. that are getting the opposite reaction to what you're getting. So it's always, mm. there's some weird kind of juju that goes on there. But this is one of those tokens that does that. So when it continues to go up and people start to get more and more pissed off, all it does is just add carry on. fuel to the fire. Yeah. Same with Solana, like the, the more it goes up, the more, like, it's... I was going to say, like, this is also, like, the power of, uh, of effective marketing as well. Because, do you remember, like, a few months ago, they were, we were talking about, um, like, gamble fire. And if you look at, literally, like, 99% of, like, gamble fire yes. projects, yes. they're in the shitter. And, dude, do you remember, at, like, Breakpoint, we interviewed a few, and we spoke to a few. Like, literally, yes. where are they now? Like literally, where yeah. are they now? Dust. It's, Dust. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they it, need. It, they need. Never... They need. They need the next bull. Yeah. that's what they need. Yeah. You can't underestimate how effective, clever, outside of the box marketing is, or content, not just creation but curation, because it looks like yes. Rollbit and the RLB token has almost like, whether it's by accident or not, they've like told a story like over like the last mm-hmm. few months. And the, the the story now really is like, you know, we're, we're paying Billy Big Bollocks, you know, of quarter, quarter of a million a month. Then that's what's driven this this pump. What's the next one going to be? I don't know. But I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so they're a perfect example of what it is that I was talking about earlier on is like, what is the potential narrative going to be? So you could argue that GameFi 
Gamble Fire, rather, was actually identified as a potential narrative that would play out. And now the, the irony of it is that it has played out. But it played out completely in a way that we didn't expect. And it's been played out by one who's basically driven their, their, their car way ahead of everybody else. And now everyone's following with similar ideas, but it is down to gamble and casino. And how do you harness that in a practical sense as opposed to synthetics and on-chain in the sense that it is as opposed to bringing the gamble to people in their lap and making it really accessible? Discord, Telegram, like, you know, and then you'll get the cream rising on those as well. Um, and then more hate will get generated. Look at Unibot, dude. I hated Unibot because um, I just hated the fact that they were charging 5% on a buy and a sell. Like, I was like, why? Why are you doing that? Hated it. Didn't get involved. And now I'm coping big time. Like, in fact, I need a box of tissues now. That's how badly I'm coping. So I was definitely wrong on that one. Like, big time. But it was obvious. And another obvious one, in my opinion, is Nolo. The guys are moving YOLO from Solana to Ethereum. It's a Discord bot. They're introducing perps in a Discord bot. You could argue that... They'll get it right, and it will be a huge success. But you never know. Let's see. But what, what's really cool about YOLO and now NOLO is that they're settling on Solana, even though the chart's going to be on ETH, and they're going to land up capturing ETH liquidity, even though it's all settling on Solana. People don't know that. But they, they pulled it off. It's all happening on Solana. It's pretty damn cool. Yeah, but they've, they've made it, and I don't know if they're using mayan or whatever they're using but they've made it so you can yes effectively operate from arbitrum or where, wherever they wanted to it's arbitrum i, I think that's i will started. say i will point out it is relatively low market cap and we do have some you know no low tokens it's migrating over so yes. but again you know I think perps print a lot harder than spot buys. But Unibot, Unibot's just announced Unibot X, which I'm imagining is a <laughs> cross-chain Oops. play on. Oh. Okay. It could be perps, but I'd imagine it's... I can imagine they're all going to converge and look like the same product. And it's just who has the better user attention and, and stickiness. But, um, like Incentives, the, the fees, all that. Yeah. 24 hours, 147,000 in fees behind Maestro, which is 182. Um, in like behind Polkadot, our way. <laughs> it's in front of Arbitrum. <laughs> so, wow. like, it's no... But I don't know how much of this part, this fees generated is from the buy and sell tax, so you have to kind of... It is slightly skewed, I think. It would be from the buy and the salt tax, and they've been seeing some huge volume. I think they're at 100 million now. Is that correct? Unibot? Not far off. 83? Just up only, isn't it? Mm. 4.1 million. Nice. Even Siri wants to get involved. Siri wants to buy Unibot, it seems. Maybe we should all go <laughs> buy Unibot. But I know, I, I just know that if I go and buy Unibot now, it will be the top and then it will nuke to 30, 30 dollars and I'll cry like a little girl. So I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um... So, d something that came up on my radar this morning was um, Circle have just launched their own bridge and it's free and it's pretty damn cool. Only between it's only between Avalanche and Arbitrum at the minute, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken, oh, is Avalanche, and, is yeah. Avalanche and, and uh, Ethereum, yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's hope it gets rolled out sooner across all chains, and we can stop paying fees, and all the other guys will cry big time. Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting one. Mm. I have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there'll be a lot of conspiracy theories around the feds watching you move funds and all that kind of stuff. It'll be an interesting debate and discussion, and CT will entertain themselves for at least 52 minutes. It'll be fun. 
We can front run it now. <laughs> Cycle should launch a governance token. <laughs> <laughs> they probably will. Up. You laugh, but I mean, if they if they are going to end up being the CBDC for the future, then they won't be doing that because they will make some people unhappy. So I think they'll protect their primary business before they do that. Yeah. I think if you can get away with not having a token and you've got a profitable business, there's no need to. <laughs> well, you something to, that I've been... don't have to deal with web yeah. marketing. Yeah, I mean, something that, that I think is... I mean, I, I spoke about it in an interview that I did with the Fuji Finance guys at the beginning of the week. And, and I think what's becoming or what will become possibly in the next for the next cycle is that more and more protocols are building to market fit and then looking at launching launching token i mean obviously the guys who are chasing the money are going to do it and that will always be there but i i believe that the more serious protocols will first build you know for market fit and then they'll go and find you know the money the same way that you know you list on a on on a traditional stock stock exchange it's kind of like you don't go and generally ask for the money first you know you go and raise the money quietly like from a seed round but the real money only comes after you've actually proven your worth in the market and i think that's going to become almost like something that will be demanded from investors going into the future in many ways i hope it is it'll be interesting to see how how that evolution or if that evolution transpires yeah yeah i know people like use the token as a get out of jail free card for just like yes. extensive runway and I think it makes people a bit lax. Like sometimes you need you need like a fire up your ass sometimes, don't you? To kind of if well, fear I mean, we, isn't we, one of the best motivators for a successful business, I don't know what it is. Well, we we always like we laugh at Dan when he says when <laughs> kind of like Dan's thing lately is it's a slow rug. And in many slow ways, rug. I think I mean I think in many ways it's true from oh, a man. complacency perspective. And it seems like Siri wants to come. Should we ask Siri a question as to she's been a uh, bitch? <laughs> how Siri feels about complacency and runways in protocols that don't deliver when they say they can deliver. I mean, we've seen it with so many like really good ideas. The guys come in, great ideas, you know, everything, the, the whole nine yards, and then they get the money and then they go quiet and they kind of like trickle feed ideas and, and, and the rest of it. And there's one that like we've been talking about. Polygon. <laughs> Polygon. <laughs> yeah. Po Polygon's team Polygon are, Polygon are doing a new token. Mate, they're rebranding as Pole. How stupid is that? They've, you know, they've said the token will be exchanged one for one, but there's going to be a 1% inflation. Yeah, on yeah. So it isn't going to be. They obviously don't have enough money. You know, the, the billions that they've made it hasn't been sufficient. Now they need several more billions so that they can continue doing what it is that they're doing. Or maybe they just want to compete with Richard Hart. Who knows? Maybe they want to outdo him. Who knows? We'll find yeah, out. But you, do, you, do, you do realize it is a third generation token. It has third generation tokenomics. You do realize that. What exactly that. has it to do? Can anyone tell me what it does? Does anyone know what it does? Like, what's its relevance? It doesn't matter. It's third generation. It's V3. Have you read the, the docs? Uh, I, 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 I skimmed them, and I, was just, and I was just like, mate, this is a bunch of fucking jargon. <laughs> they. Uh... I don't know. I have my own <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get needs like, a hug. I need a lot longer than two minutes to get in my thoughts around Polygon. <laughs> Fucking red, red ball of crypto. <laughs> but, uh, um, dude, that's too funny. There's I'm another one. I mean, this thing's 140% up from the lows. Um, Solana in full, full force. Oh, can I just point this out as well? For anyone who's asking me why there's only 18k liquidity there isn't so radium has gone straight liquidity pools and deck screen it doesn't pick up um love the new phantom branding as well deck screen it doesn't pick up concentrate liquidity so there's actually 283 grand so and the api is pretty fucking good as well you actually get some of the lp fees um, some of the um, hero fees distributed towards the pool as well. So, yeah, so there isn't 14k liquidity. Always go to the source. <laughs> Always go to the source. And on that Always. light, 
on our bombshell. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time and for your valuable insights. All right. As always. Take it easy. See ya.